Hi boys and girls, my name is Miss Connolly. I started making some math videos for my own students and then I wanted to share them with all of you so we could get as many students learning as possible during this crazy time. So today for math time, we are gonna be talking about reading and writing numbers into the hundreds place. So three digit numbers is what we're gonna be working on. All right, so you can see on my screen that I have a very familiar place value model for you, but we're gonna go over it um, just in case that anyone's not familiar with it, okay? And then we'll get into reading and writing numbers. So these um, single little squares over here are gonna represent our ones place, okay? So you see that it's one single square by itself and those are gonna be our ones, our singles, if that's how your teachers referred to it, okay? These strips here have 10 cubes together. So let's double check to make sure I'm not lying. One, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So one long strip here represents a group of 10 ones, which is also one group of 10. So when we're counting these, we can count them by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, or we can say that I know that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups of 10 is 70. Okay, so there's a couple different ways we can count them. You might want to count them by ones and say, I know that seven tens is 70, or you might want to count by tens. Okay, but as you can see, just so we're super clear that there are 10 single squares inside one of these, and that's why we're calling it a group of 10. Okay, so let's move over here. And what we have going on is a group of, or sorry, yes, a one group of 100. All right, so See my 10 here that I'm moving around? I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Okay, so there are 100 squares on here. And let's see how many groups of 10 that is, just for a little review. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So we have 10 groups of 10, which is the same as 100, one group of 100, which is the same as 100 groups of one. So if you counted all these little guys by ones, you'd get to 100, okay? So for the purpose of this, we're gonna be able to say this is 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, or you might say one, two, three, four, five, and I know that five groups of 100 is 500, okay? So let's get started. Um, what we have here is the place value model for a number. We are gonna practice figuring out what we see, and then we're gonna put it into uh, this place value represent, or sorry, this place value chart over here, and then I'm gonna teach you how to read the number, and then you're gonna practice them on your own. So let's get started. Over here, we were thinking about what we see, 100, 200, count with me, 300, 400, 500. So I know, oops, something went wrong. I know that I have five, <laughs> that's a five, everyone. I have five groups of 100, which is the same as 500, okay? Let's think about how many groups of 10 that I have. Let's count by ones and say what we know, what we know about tens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups of 10. Does that represent the number seven? Is that the value of it right now? Or are we talking about seven tens? Can someone tell me what seven tens is? You got it, it's 70, okay? So you can say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So we have 70 or seven groups of 10. And then we have one, two, three, four, five singles. Okay, so what we have to think about is how can we write this as a three digit number and how would we read it? Okay, so we have five groups of 100. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the digit five and you are going to put it in the hundreds place. And that represents five 
groups of 100, which we will end up reading as 500. It's the value of this five is 500 because we put it in the hundreds place. So these places mean something, okay? So then we're gonna think about how many groups of 10 do we have and what digit should we write in the tens place? So when we were counting these, we counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups of 10, which we knew was 70, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the digit seven, we're gonna put it in the tens place, and the digit seven here represents seven groups of 10, which you know is 70, okay? Then we're gonna go to the ones place, and we're gonna think about how many ones we have, one, two, three, four, five, and we're gonna write that digit in the ones place to show that we have five groups of one. Okay, so I took the number of groups of 100 and put them in the hundreds place. That's the digit I decided to put there. What does it represent? Five hundreds, five hundred, you see that. Okay, then I counted how many groups of 10 do I have? I put the digit seven in the tens place and we know that stands for 70. And then I counted the ones and I put the digit five in the ones place, which means that I have five groups of one. So how do we read this number when we bring it all together? We are going to say like this, all right? Listen closely, I'm gonna explain. You're gonna say 575, okay? So let's go over what just happened. I read the number in the hundreds place, five. The digit, sorry, the digit in the hundreds place I read, five, and then I said hundred. Then I looped these two together and I said it as if I was only saying this part of the number after I said 500. Okay, so I said 500, say this together, 75. Okay, so when we have a number in the hundreds place, we're gonna say the digit and then say the word hundred. Then we're gonna read these two digits together as if it was a two digit number. So we say 575, okay? I wanna point out something important. I did not say the word and, okay? We are not saying 500 and 75, okay? That is a totally different number that you'll learn about when you're my student, okay? Up in fifth grade, I promise I'll teach you. Um, so how we're gonna read it is without the word and, you are gonna say 575. Okay, let's try another one. And now that you know a little bit more, you should be predicting what I'm gonna say. Okay, so we have our place value model over here, um, the place value chart over here. We're gonna put in the correct digits in the correct place and we're gonna practice saying the number. So let's think about what you see. What do you see here for hundreds? How many? One, two, three groups of 100, which you know, is 300, okay, so 100, 200, 300, so we see 300, okay? Then we go to the tens place, and what do you see? I see one, two, three, four tens, one ten, two ten, three tens, four tens, or you can count it like this, 10, 20, 30, 40, okay? And you know that you see um, 40 cubes represented, or, four groups of 10, four tens. And then we come to the ones place and what do we see? One, two, and three. Three groups of one here. I don't know why I can't write a three. <laughs> so now let's think about what we're gonna write in each um, place value. We need to select the digit that represents how many hundreds there are. Okay, so I'm gonna think to myself, how many hundreds did we see? We saw one, two, three hundreds. So I'm gonna take the digit three. Three can mean so many different things, it just depends on what place value it's in. So since it's in the hundreds place, this digit three represents three hundreds. Okay, I want you predicting, what are we gonna put in the tens place? 
How many groups of 10 do you see? One, two, three, four. I know that that means that, I know that represents 40 cubes, but I'm gonna put the digit four in the tens, please. And that represents the value of four tens, which is 40, okay? So since there's the digit four here, the value of four tens is 40. Okay, so we're just putting the digits in the correct place so that we can read the number and that's how um, we communicate with place value. One, two, three ones, we're gonna put this here. Okay, so three groups of ones, four groups of tens, three groups of 100, that's what I clearly see over here. So how do we read this number? Well, we're gonna do it the same way we did with the last one. So I want you to predict Pause me if you need to. Try it on your own. Now ask yourself, did you use the word and? If you did, I want you to try again. Okay, let's do it together. So we're gonna say this digit, and then we're gonna say this place value. Then we're gonna string these two together and say this part of the number. Okay, so let's try it. 343. Okay, without the word and, try it again with me, 343. And that's how we are reading numbers that are three digits. Three, you say the hundred, and then 43. You don't need to say that. So we say 343. One more time, 343. All right, so that's how we are going to be reading and writing these numbers. Let's do another one that looks different. I love different. All we're gonna do is we're gonna think about what we already know and we're gonna apply it to a new situation. So let's think, how many groups of 100 do you see? I see one, two, three, four groups of 100, which we know represents 400. What about the 10? Are there any groups of 10 here? What would we write to show that there's no groups of 10 here? I don't know. Anyone know? We're gonna put a zero. There's zero groups of 10. Okay, then we're gonna be thinking about the ones place. One, two, three, four, five. And we have five groups of one, which represents the number five. So four groups of 100, which represents 400. Zero groups of 10, zero. Five groups of one, five. So let's start putting our digits in the correct place in the place value chart. And I'm gonna get rid of this S so we don't think we have to say it. All right, so how many groups of 400? One, two, three, four. So what digit do we put in the hundreds place? Four, okay? This digit here, four, represents four groups of 100, four hundreds, which is 400, okay? One, two, three, four, and we see it there, okay? Now, this is what's important. There's zero groups of 10 here. So we need to put the digit zero in the tens place, okay? If you skip that step, look at what number you're gonna end up with. That's not what we need, right? Okay, so let's go to the ones place and we know that we have five groups of ones, so we're gonna put the digit five here, okay? So what we, ha what we did here is we have a zero to represent that there were zero groups of 10 in the number that we were trying to read, okay? We see 400 and we see five, but there's no groups of 10. So let's think about how to read this number the same way we did the last ones, but this time you're not gonna say 50, 60, 70 in the tens place because there's zero groups of 10. So what you're gonna do is you're going to say the digit that's in the hundreds place, you're gonna say 400. Then we read this number. And guess what number that is? Five, which way do I go? Five. So we're not saying the word and, so let's practice putting it all together. 405. One more time, we say 405. 
not 400 and 5, totally different number, okay? Not even a number. You would have to say something else after that. I'll teach you in fifth grade, promise. Okay, so 405, and that's how you would read that number, okay? So special thing happened in this situation is that we did not have any groups of 10, so we had to put the digit zero in the tens place to show there were zero groups of 10, and then we carried on. We read the number the same exact way. You're still putting these two together. You say 405, okay? And remember, if you forget that zero in the tens place, you're gonna end up with 45, and that's not the number that we see represented here, okay? So be careful. Last one, we're gonna go through quick, okay? What digit do you think should go in the hundreds place? How many groups of 100 do you see? Well, I see two groups of 100, which I know represents 200. So guess what digit I'm gonna write in the hundreds place? Two, to show that I have two groups of 100. 100. Two groups of 100, okay? We'll cross that off so we don't think that we have to say the S. Okay, then we're gonna go to the tens and I see one group of 10, two groups of 10, three groups of 10, four groups of 10, five groups of 10, which I know represents the number 50. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then I'm gonna go to the ones place. And what do you notice? There's no ones, okay? So what, what digit do we put when we don't see any ones represented? Just like last time, we're gonna put a zero, okay? So we have two in the hundreds place, then we need to think about how many groups of tens, um, what digit should we put in the tens place, and we know that we have five groups of 10, so we're gonna put five in the tens place that represents 50, five tens is 50, and then since there's nothing here, zero groups of one, we put the digit zero, in the ones place, okay? So I am going to read this one last number with you, and then I am going to give you some numbers that I want you to interpret the place value model and write the number and read it on your own, okay? So let's think about this. We're gonna say the digit that is in the hundreds place, we say the digit two, and then the place value hundred, okay? Then we're gonna read this number, together as if it was a number by itself, okay? So we say 250. Everyone's following the mouse here. Two, say the word 100, read this 50. Not the word and, 250, okay? All right, I'm gonna put some up for you and you are gonna try them. And I hope you are excited about reading and writing numbers into the hundreds place. Bye. So here are three examples that you can try on your own. I want you to figure out how many groups of 100 you're dealing with, how many groups of 10, how many groups of one. Then you're gonna write the correct digit into the place value charts that you see. Make one on your paper, please. And then I want you to practice reading that number out loud without using the word and. Remember, you're gonna say the digit and then say 100 and then read the tens and ones together like we practiced, okay?